Hello and welcome to Tommy Talks TV. I have one singular goal with this show and that is to help you make smarter decisions so that you can have better relationships. I'd like to start as usual by saying a very big thank you. Thank you for all your likes and your shares and your comments on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. I really, really appreciate you because you're helping us spread the message further faster. So thank you very much indeed. Now today I'm going to be taking another one of your questions. Last week um, I shared with us a question that came through from someone in my audience and that question was simply this. Please share with us some possible questions to ask someone um, when you're courting or when you're, you're in a dating relationship. So in other words, what sorts of things should we be talking about? So last week we explored the first six things which, which you should talk about um, and those were things that should be talked about when you're just getting to know someone um, and you want to explore their thinking to see whether there is potential for that relationship at all. Now what I want to do this week is to share with you on things that you need to talk about when you are definitely heading towards marriage with someone. In other words, maybe there's been a proposal um, or you're both working on the understanding that you'll be getting married so you can afford to go into deeper issues which would be inappropriate to talk about uh, when you're just getting to know someone. So this week I'm going to be talking about those six crucial things you should be talking about once you know that this is someone you plan to get married to. Now, the first of them is family plans. Um, so what kind of family do you want to have? How do you view uh, your future together? Uh, and this is particularly important. You know, it's, it's important to talk about whether or not you will have children, for instance, and if so, when and how many. Um, and I cannot tell you how important this is because, you know, I've, I've been in, in counseling situations with, with couples who maybe are getting ready to get married and they've not had this discussion at all. Or I've seen situations where, you know, a couple is now married and they're having conflict because they did not have this conversation ahead of time. So you need to save yourself the potential for conflict ahead of time um, by having this conversation. Before we got married, my husband and I had this conversation and we had decided um, that what we wanted to do was to spend the first couple of years getting to know each other, you know, after we got married. And then that after that, we would trust God for children. So we didn't want to have children immediately after getting married, but we would trust God, you know, after maybe a couple of years or so uh, to, to have children. And we also agreed that we would have two of whatever it was that God gave us, boys or girls, um, two of them, and that would be it. So we knew what the plan was, and we submitted the plan to God. Now, once we got married, there was no conflict on, on these critical issues. So we had our first daughter, um, this was two and a half years, roughly, after our marriage, and our second daughter was born, actually, exactly two and a half years later. There was no question of, oh, uh, I think I want another one, or, you know, let's try for a boy, that sort of thing. We were both so grateful to God for what he had blessed us with, and we were ready to, you know, now begin to build our, our future together with these two lovely children that God had, had blessed us with. Now, I do acknowledge that things may not always work out exactly to plan, especially when it comes to this issue of you know, having children, but at least have a plan so that you're not storing up conflict for the future. And also, you know, it's important that you talk about, you know, where you want to live as a family, what kind of upbringing do you want your children to have, what sort, what sort of education uh, do you want them to have, you know, what, what's, what kind of city do you want to live in, cast a vision is what I'm saying, cast a vision for your family's future um, and, it, and let it be a vision that you're both sold out to and then trust God to bless that vision. So talk about your family plans. Now, number eight um, is talking about your past. And I can see someone just, you know, just breathing deeply there. Talking about your past is so important before you get married to someone. Do not wait until you are married to drop a bombshell on your spouse. I cannot overemphasize this. People ask me this all the time. You know, how much of my past should I reveal? Let me say this. Anything that they would discover in the future that could end up with them feeling like you have betrayed their trust by not telling them should be discussed now. That is the rule of thumb. You know, anything that would impact on the future of your marriage should be discussed now so that there will be no surprises in the future. You know, so that means things like, you know, past relationships in reasonable details, you know, if they're serious relationships, um, heartbreaks, 
failed courtships, um, significant sexual relationships or, you know, experiences that you have had in the past. If you've had sexual abuse in your past, then you've got to be prepared to open up and talk about it. If you made relationship mistakes in the past, uh, either before you came to know Christ or even after that, you know, for instance, you had a child out of wedlock, uh, you had an abortion, uh, you were cohabiting with someone, you've got to talk about it, even though it might be uncomfortable, but you owe that to them. Um, you know, people say, what if they leave? But my view is this, anyone who is meant to be in your life will have the grace to handle your past. That is my view. If God has brought them into your life and they're supposed to be a part of your, your life, they will have the grace to handle your past. You know, it may be initially difficult and a struggle for them, but they will go through that struggle and you will go through it together and you will come out, come out on the other side. But at least you both know that you're not getting married under false pretenses. So give them the chance to say yes to the real you with your past and, you know, all that represents, you know, rather than getting married under false pretenses, uh, because the truth is, is, there is no point in living a lie, you know, living under the shadow of being found out, because if they do find out eventually, you will lose their heart, you will lose their trust anyway, and, you know, that's simply not worth the risk, because at that stage, you don't really have a marriage, even if you're, you're still living together, you don't really have a marriage, because the trust has been lost. So what I'll say is this, you know, this is not something that you owe everyone, but you know, if you're in a relationship that is definitely heading towards marriage, then you've absolutely got to talk about your past with honesty. The next thing I'd like to talk about, number nine, is health issues and medical history. And this is quite similar to the, the previous one that I talked about. It's one of those things that is not appropriate to talk about with just anyone. But if a relationship is heading towards marriage, then you've, you've got to be you know, open and honest about what you're bringing into the marriage health-wise. So in some parts of the world, for instance, sickle cell anemia is, is a challenge uh, that, that people deal with. And it has implications not just for your own health, but also for your children's health. So you've got to talk about it as difficult as it may be. I've heard, you know, of people who keep serious conditions like, you know, maybe HIV, a secret until after a marriage before sharing. That is unjust. Because the thing is this, even if you are trusting God for healing, you should be able to trust God together rather than keeping the other person in the dark and saying, oh, I'm believing God, you know, that, that I'm healed. Um, you know, I believe, absolutely, I believe in, in divine health, but you, you need to be able to trust God together. Don't keep them in the dark. If you have a family history of, you know, certain Ill illnesses that could impact on your own family, then talk about it. If you want to be trusted, then you have to prove yourself trustworthy by being open and honest about your, your health. And, you know, other things to talk about around this is also, what is your approach to wellness? Uh, your approach to diet? Because some people are really into, you know, wellness, eating well, exercising, you know, um, you know having a, a good diet. Talk about those things. What's your attitude to, to medicines um, and, and divine healing? Because there are people who are really, you know, quite strict and it's like, well, it's divine health or nothing. You know, I won't touch medicines and all that. Those are serious issues that you've got to talk about before you get married so that it doesn't cause conflict in the future. So talk about your health openly. And the next one, which is really important, uh, number 10, is to talk about your finances talk about your finances, talk about your attitude to money, um, you know, how you see money, how you view money, talk about how you want to handle your future finances, talk about your income. It baffles me that sometimes I find, you know, people are in a relationship about to get married to each other. They have no idea of each other's income. I mean, look, if your money is not going to be won, then what is the point of being won? Um, th th that's the thing. So you've got to, be, if you can't trust someone, you know, to, enough to talk about your income with them, then there is definitely something wrong somewhere. You probably should not be getting married. And there are people who are married and who don't talk about their income. So, you know, you've had a raise and your spouse doesn't even know about it. You know, that is is is, is completely the wrong way to build a marriage because um, ultimately the Bible says the two shall become one. And if your money is not one, you are not truly one. So talk about your income. 
talk about your savings if you you know your savings if you have savings you know talk about that what investments do you have talk about that uh, talk about your spending habits you know are you quite a, quite a spender because you know that's something that you need to discuss so that maybe if one of you is is better at managing money than the other then you can discuss how you want to manage your finances in the future so that the person who is better at budgeting maybe takes that responsibility within the marriage so that you know things can work better with it within the marriage if you've got debts or maybe student loans talk about it don't keep these things a secret you know it may be embarrassing if you have maybe significant uh, debts that you're dealing with but look they need to know what they're getting into and that's really really crucial so you've got to be honest about that and also be honest about your financial plans um you know what you're hoping for what you're trusting god to, to build in the future and another very important aspect of finances is to talk about dependence um you know so and and this one can tend to cause conflict if it's not something you've discussed before so if you have dependence then you've got to share it with that that person because that will impact on uh, your your family finances if you need to put your siblings through school then you've got to discuss it now so that there is agreement for the future how will you support your parents um, that's another very important question you know how will you deal with both sides of the family it's important that you discuss these issues so that you can come to some form of agreement and you're both on the same page because the thing is is once you you know you sort out these issues before you get married then you don't have surprises after you get married because these are things that you've already agreed on previously and the next one number 11 is expressions of love so essentially this is all about helping your 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 spouse or your future spouse get to know better how best to love you so you know you've got to be able to interpret yourself to them so that they can understand what exactly does it take to love this person and love this person successfully part of that will be talking about your love languages um you know we've all uh, you, well, you've probably heard about love languages um Gary Chapman came up with with the whole concept of love languages uh, his book the five love languages absolutely excellent if you haven't read it you've got to get that book and read it so he talks about five um love languages which um people tend to have um you know some may have a combination some may prefer just one and the, the five love languages are acts of service so people some people just like you to do things for them for some people quality time is their is their love language um you know they just really want you to spend time with them for some people touch physical touch is their their key love language for other people gifts really mean a lot to them it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive but it's more about you know the fact that you thought about them and you, and you got them something and for others it's words of affirmation it matters to them that you verbalize how you feel about them so this is something you need to discuss so that you both feel loved in the relationship because you know if you're putting out maybe uh you know acts of service for instance because that is your love language and then the other person's love language is quality time where they're saying look you know I don't really feel loved because you don't spend time with me and you're thinking well I'm doing all these things for you I'm working hard and all that um you know but then there's a mismatch there so you need to understand each other's love languages and part of talking about you know expressions of love is also you know having a discussion on your attitude to sex because that's going to be really important after you get married so what are your expectations of your sexual relationship i know this can be a difficult discussion uh, to have if you're 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 managing your your relationship or your courtship in the way that you should do you know as a christian courtship that means you're abstaining from sex so to have discussions about sex can be challenging and maybe sometimes it's it's helpful to have this mediated by you know a marriage counselor or, you know when you got your marriage counseling and all that so that you can have Uh, those discussions but you know it's worth broaching the, the subject if you've had any negative experiences that may have influenced you in the past or you know negative ideas and and thoughts and all that then talk about it you know if there are things that you've learned that are helpful you know talk about it how educated are you in this area if there are books that you have read that would be helpful then you know share those books i mean what my husband and and i did was that um there there was a book i think it was called the, the act of marriage that talked um in, in quite extensively about the sexual relationship in marriage and we read we both read the book separately uh you know shortly before we got married so at least we we had sort of like a basis 
um, for for how we were going to head into marriage. So the, the expressions of love are really, really important to talk about. And then the last one, number 12, um, talk about your wedding plans. That sounds fairly obvious, but you know, it's something that you've really got to discuss. So what kind of, of wedding do you want to have? Uh, when do you want to get married? Uh, do you where, do you want the marriage to be, a, the wedding to be a big mar- wedding or, or, or a small wedding? Some people want a destination wedding to go, go away and have a wedding somewhere. So where do you want it to be? How will it be financed? That's really, really important. You know, what are your financial plans around that? Who's going to finance it? Um, you know, which part uh, you know, is, is each of you going to play? Um, uh, what is the role of family in, 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 in the wedding? So talk extensively about what your wedding plans are um, you know, so that you can build for a successful future. What kind of honeymoon do you, do you want to have? What can you afford to spend? Don't go over spending on a wedding simply to impress people and then you end up you know, in, in, in uh, financial difficulty shortly after you get married. So you've got to talk about this whole issue of you know, how exactly do you want to have your wedding what kind of wedding do you see yourselves having well so that's been the 12 things to talk about in a relationship i hope this has been helpful to you i'm sure there will be other things as well that you know might cross your mind and if something pops in your mind that you think i've not talked about then please drop it in the in the comments below because that might help someone else well i hope this has helped you if this has helped you then please leave me a message on facebook on instagram or youtube or wherever it is you're watching and if you've got a question you would like me to answer then head on over to tommytalks.com forward slash ask and i'll answer your question next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.